Magandang gabi po, Luzon, Visayas at Mindana. Magandang hapo, Sinasa, ang patrol ng Pilipino. Nagbabalita ang naglilingkot sa inyo saan man sa mundo. This is the two biggest broadcasting network in the Philippines. The latest research suggests that the news can shape us in surprising ways, from our perception of priests to the content of our dreams, to our chances of having a heart attack. Why it's very important to have our own Filipino media outlet to promote Filipino cultures in Australia. Um, as you know, my career by profession is that I'm a journalist and the editor of Money Magazine right now. This is Michelle Baltasar, publisher of Australian Filipina and editor-in-chief of Money Magazine. There's always breaking stereotypes is the number one thing. Uh, number two is uh, inspiring Filipinos, young Filipinos out there that, hey, look at, look at us. These are our stories. For example, we did a story on um, Melanie Perkins, who is the billionaire chief executive of Canva. Uh, I don't think a lot of people know that she's got a Filipino background in her. Uh, then we wrote a story yesterday about a nurse who turned into a cybersecurity professional. These are stories that maybe a Sydney Morning Herald wouldn't pick up or not uh, something that Channel 7 would pick up. but. Australian Filipina will definitely write those stories. Hi, I'm Miko Santos, the founder of Kangaroo Firm Media Lab and creator of Podcast Creator Society and Podcast Freelancer Hub. This is a Filipino Tastic, a podcast series about Filipino diaspora and their stories to inspire others to make a social impact to our community. What is the role of media in preserving the Filipino identity in a foreign land? I think all the media, uh, public, community publications, whether it's Australia and Filipina, uh, we all have the same role. And like you said, you kind of see the culture diluted, the Filipino identity diluted because of the world we live in. I mean, it's not anyone's fault that a young kid who grew up here would speak would speak English, not Filipino, or Bisaya, or Ilocano, for example. So one of the things we do is really break the stereotypes about this kind of monolithic view of Filipinos as just the one thing. We're actually a, a diversity of subcultures even within the Philippines. There's the indigenous communities in Luzon, which are very different for example, in Mindanao or Visayas. This is Juan Paulo de Gaspi, chairman of Prime sure. ABI. Uh, so my name is Juan Paulo de Gaspi, and uh, I am a broadcaster um, and general volunteer for Radio Filipino. And I'm also the chairperson for the radio station that Radio Filipino incorporated place from, which is called 5 EBI. Can you tell us the main objective of the creation of Radio Filipino in Adelaide? Uh, one of the core objectives of Radio Filipino is to preserve and celebrate the Filipino culture, and that's through language, uh, but also a deep appreciation of what the Filipino culture means, you know, through, through whether it's talking about the food, through the festivals, through cultural events. And the diversity of cultural events. So, um, you know, we've had Sabuanos, Visayans, we've had different explorations of different types of what it is to be a Filipino. Uh, but that's the, the primary uh, function of it is to celebrate it through language and music. Michelle tell us the challenges when she creating the first and only women's lifestyle and business publication with the Australian Filipino community in mind. Yes, it was good question. It was very challenging in that, of course, it wasn't going to be a full-time job for me because it is a small community. I think on last count, there are more than 300,000 Filipinos in Australia. And in, in the city that I'm in, we're talking about maybe 100,000 or less. 
but everyone tried to help and to be honest it's really just the inspiration from the community they really wanted our own publication uh, and tackling our own cultural issues so it got easier and now i'm working with two dedicated writers Chi De Jesus and Bioli Calvert as part of the Australian Filipino team. Setting up a Radio Filipino is not easy, but it worth it. Say Juan Paulo Legaspi. In the earlier days before you did we had uh, music streaming and MP3s, uh, you'd physically have to buy a suitcase worth of CDs uh, and bring them over from the Philippines uh, just so you can have a library of We had, we had quite an impressive library of CDs and vinyls uh, when they were used more extensively because that's that's how you collect the music. Michelle and Juan agree that once there's always a gender imbalance in anything we do, but the important we have a medium to spread the message about Filipino culture. Why is that? One, there is always already the gender imbalance in anything we do. There's the proverbial glass ceiling for any woman to succeed in their career, uh, profession, or their personal lives, combining with work and family commitments. And if if I can say this in Tagalog, on top of that is pagiging migrante or pagiging Pilipina. So it's almost like double the challenge. So why did we do this? It's really to say, hey, we exist, uh, we're here, and we're trying to contribute to the society. And the Australian Filipina gives that voice that would otherwise be lost or would disappear if it doesn't exist. When you, especially when you're first or second generation Filipino. So in my case, I'm a first generation Filipino, but I came here when I was quite young. Uh, going through and listening to Filipino radio growing up, it helped me kind of address a lot of the cultural and identity questions that you, especially when you're going through high school, you, you start asking yourself, who am I a lot more? And listening to those types of programs, especially in an environment when that type of content is, wasn't widely available. And um, even now, like you, we can go on Netflix, we go on YouTube, we can watch whatever we want from the Philippines. But what radio and localized radio helps is it explores the topic within the confines of your local geography. So it's talking about what it's like to be a Filipino in Adelaide. And I thought that was really, that it spoke to me because it was a lot more personal rather than just watching, I don't know, eat bulaga in, <laughs> online, you have a much more deeper and personal connection with the culture. We sit down with some of the members of Radio Filipino in Adelaide to understand more the importance of radio to spread the Filipino culture in Australia. Um, ano ba sa sabihin? <laughs> Full name ganun. Just, just introduce yourself first. Okay. okay. Hi, I'm Idel Lopez and I'm currently the ano ba, ERPI president Ethnic Radio Filipino Incorporated. Ethnic Radio. Yep. Ethnic Radio Incorporated um, president, and I'm also one of the Barcada Radio hosts um, every Friday night. So that normally it's uh, first Friday of the month. So that's me. <laughs> it's quite amazing how Adele, Rose, Lourdes, and Celia telling us the story of Radio Filipino, how it started. You know, uh, the Radio Filipino really was uh, was founded 
because of the settlement issues, yung mga bagong Pilipinong dumarating dito, mga bagong migrante, yung 1970s to 80s. Kasi uh, we want to listen to our songs. We want to listen to Filipino talking, other, you know, our Filipino language. Kaya ang, ang ano noong time na yon is to promote our language and our culture as well. Tsaka nagka, doon lang kami nagkakanoon, uy, may birthday ngayon, birthday ni so and so, punta tayo, parang ganun. So, in a way, we we were able to to bind with each other kasi nandun yung radyo. At saka every time, ano, oy, Merry Chris, ah, happy birthday, so and so, Miko, happy birthday. Oy, birthday ngayon ni Lourdes, magpapalit yun, something like that. So, <laughs> <laughs> Bang Lourdes yata yun. <laughs> oh, oh, say you. <laughs> I think I think even if I wasn't there in 1978 or the 80s, it's easy to imagine uh, that people would be feeling homesick for the language yeah. and feeling right. homesick yeah. for the music and anything Filipino back then. And dahil nga wala pang internet noon, information and all this music is not that readily accessible back then. So Truth. it re, radio was still the most popular and mo, eas, easiest medium. Yeah. That's true. To turn to, like yeah. e, even in uh, when I heard ma, the first program of Radio Filipino, it was by accident, and this was. Uh, Maybe 2006, 2007, or eight. When I first heard it accidentally in the car, because I was fiddling with the station, the radio stations while my husband was driving. Bigla ko narinig. Ay, may nagsasalita ng Tagalog na excited ako. Bigla excited, excited ako. Dahil ay, may nagsasalita ng Tagalog sa radio. And that's when I discovered uh, na meron palang radio program sa ano. So. Inalam ko kung anong oras yung ano yung program, but I was still working in an office back then. I brought a little Walkman, and every time it was on, I would listen. Not I knowing that one market. day, yeah, I not, not knowing this one day, market. I would I would hear my own voice on the radio. Na ina magkita kita, di ba? Nung magkita tayo sa palengke. What do you think, Abel? Um, so. <laughs> sa akin naman um, tama yung sinabi ni Ate Lourdes so more of para hindi natin makalimutan yung sariling wika natin on top of that para sa show ko naman more of uh, presenting or featuring yung mga bagong artista or new music na hindi pa natin napapakinggan or pwede rin yung mga lumang awitin na gusto nating balik-balikan so ma yun yung import yung importansya nung ano radio community yung Filipino radio community sa akin kasi parang nakakakonekta pa rin tayo kahit nasa Australia tayo feeling natin nasa Pilipinas pa rin tayo kahit pa paano as one Paulo Legaspi said I think it will be a, a really interesting change and I've started to notice so even in the early days of Raja Pilipino, it was broadcasting news from uh, the Philippines into Adelaide. These days, it's, we still talk about what's happening in the Philippines, but because there's a bigger diaspora community, it's becoming more and more about what's happening with the Filipino community in Adelaide. And then believe it or not, because it's now online sometimes, you, we get audiences in the Philippines listening in what's happening in Adelaide. So it's kind of come in a reverse direction. But I think the most important part is still maintaining that connection um, with with the Philippines, but also Filipinos abroad. I think there's a lot of global and universal connection about what it is to be a Filipino outside the Philippines. And I think that's going to be the shift in the next five to 10 years about it's not just broadcasting in, in Adelaide, but it's celebrating what's happening in Adelaide around the world. That makes absolute sense. So I'm part of a not-for-profit group called Adhika, which is a association for media professionals in in the country. And we are made up of uh, online publications, radio programs, um, also TV. So for example, SBS 
uh, Annalyn Violata and Edinel Magtibay supports uh, Adhika. And then there is also what we call the Phil Press Seed Group. So already Australian Filipina is collaborating with all the local radio stations, but in particular Radio Tagumpay, which is a Sydney-based radio. And we also uh, liaise and share news with other online publications like Bayanihan or uh, before there was also the Filipino Australian. And really at this stage, there's no competition. I think the room is big enough for all the community media to work together to write the stories and share our culture. Whatever the medium you're using, it's a good to have connection to our motherland. We are Global Filipino. This podcast is written and hosted by me, Nico Santos, produced by Kangaroo Firm Media Lab, Australia's independent podcast management company. Researched by Yvonne Santos, edited and mixed by Jaime Bada, sound designed by Ivan Santos. Our podcast producers, Jamie Lopez, assistant podcast producer, Renee Bernales, voiceover artist, Kiko Malikden, music by Audio Hero, Filipino Tastic logo by Sid Tabar. Thank you to our guests, Michelle Baltasar, Juan Paolo Legaspi, Adele Lopez, Rose Holland, Lourdes Blinko, and Celia Guillermo. See you in two weeks' time, and this is Filipino Tastic. Mabuhay. <laughs>